They're synonymous with exploration. The DNA is all about adventure. A machine born to the second oldest four-wheel drive manufacturer in the automotive world. Everybody's heard of Land Rover, and no matter where you go in the world, you'll see a Land Rover vehicle. Let's go anywhere vehicle, any time of the day, any terrain. And it's the great granddaddy of the luxury SUV segment. Range Rover was the luxury SUV before there were luxury SUVs. Range Rover, a machine as comfortable on an estate as it is crossing the African continent. Hardcore for the gentleman. The car has the capability to go places that a gentleman never would, but with the ease that would please a gentleman. Now the mark faces competition like never before. Companies are seeing the opportunity, so everybody's moved into that SUV world. Land Rover has to be wondering, where do we go next? The brand's answer is to once again explore the unknown. We said, well, we want to produce the ultimate, the most luxurious Range Rover ever. Ultimate off-road luxury that goes by the name SV Autobiography Dynamic. It's a 550 horsepower supercharged super SUV. The best 4x4 in the world, in my opinion. A machine that combines sophisticated luxury with elegant performance and bespoke manufacturing. The SV Autobiography has the nicest interior, the softest leathers, the nicest woods. It's basically a Rolls Royce. Range Rover SV Autobiography Dynamic. A one-of-a-kind machine that starts at a champagne-popping 164,000 pounds. I uh, have made a few dreams. I've built a lot of cars for a lot of celebrities and the royal family and people like that. We try and build whatever they want. Any colour, seats, bodywork, headlinings, motifs. Uh, family Chris, anything like that. If they want that on the car, we will try and put that on the car for them. You know, uh, tastefully. A touch of tastefulness that is extremely English. What makes it British is the fact that it's always been built here. It's always been manufactured here and designed and built here in Britain. I think we're very proud of being English, and they're well built, they're robust and it is, it's a part of us, it's in our backside, we become part of that car. But I think it's important to the country, I think there's that rise, smile, that here is a brand that is ours and there's nothing else quite like it anywhere else in the world. Uniqueness instilled on the factory floor by a family of dedicated craftspeople. Promoted as a family or insighted business. Get your uncles, your aunts, your cousins, whatever, get them in there. They want to say, oh, this is the place to be. It's a big sense of community within the facility. An artisanal community that not only puts their hearts and souls into each machine, but also their livelihoods. Your Land Rover is the backbone of Birmingham and the Midlands, the whole of the Midlands. Manufacturing may have been on a little bit of a roller coaster ride. It's something that people have depended on for their livelihoods for a long time. These days, Range Rover and its parent, Land Rover, are riding higher than ever thanks to an unparalleled run of success. We don't want this country to become a warehouse where everything's important and we just pass it on. We want to keep manufacturing in the UK. In less than a decade, Land Rover and Range Rover's production has almost tripled. It's great for the amount of jobs of people who were around here. If this place was ever not here, oh, what would happen, I don't know. Today, there's little chance that the factory might vanish. They build over 430,000 machines annually. Range Rovers are now Britain's largest luxury export contributing a staggering £10 billion a year to the economy. 
Our home, our heart and soul is in the UK. We clearly impact the West Midlands very significantly from an economic perspective. Amazingly, that economic impact begins thanks to a snowstorm. Well, Andrew's story starts post-war Britain, 1947, and they had a very bad winter with very, very heavy snowfall. And Morris Wilkes needed to plough the driveway. At the time, Wilkes is chief engineer for the Rover Car Company, a luxury saloon manufacturer. He was a practical man who loved engineering ideas and loved creating something special. However, in post-war Britain, no one needs a fancy saloon. What Wilkes needs is a new idea. His next door neighbor had a World War II Jeep and he bought the Jeep off his neighbor and started using it in a practical sense. As he plows his driveway, Wilkes has a revelation. This inspired him to take it to his farm and at that point, he started to use it more for leisure pursuits, more the way we use an SUV today. Wilkes realizes that the key to keeping his car company in business isn't luxury, but rather basic utility. That was really the embryonic stage of coming up with the Land Rover story. Wilkes cannibalizes what he has on hand and builds a Spartan prototype. There was a vehicle that was developed from using the basis of a World War II Jeep because there wasn't anything else before that. The centre steering was an idea of trying to sort of make it a little bit like a tractor. Centering the steering wheel allows the machine to be sold without worrying about which side of the road people drive on in different regions. Yet when theory meets practice, it proves rather unfeasible. They realized very, very quickly that having the steering wheel and all the arrangements of the off-road system, the gears around your feet was quite complex. So it evolved very quickly to having right and left-hand drive. The new machine debuts on April the 13th, 1948 at the Amsterdam Auto Show and gets rave reviews, in part due to a marketing video called The Farmer's Best Friend. In the British Isles and other agricultural countries, there are still many farmers who rely on the horse as a means of pulling machinery and heavy loads. Series 1 started life in, as I call it, Welsh Wales, designed specifically to be a working vehicle on a farm, and it found its way all over the world. The new vehicle is a tour de force that features an aluminium body over a steel chassis that's paired with a 52 horsepower inline four-cylinder engine and permanent four-wheel drive. The original Land Rover is basically England building their Jeep. It's interesting Morris Wilkes to create a vehicle because he needed it. There was a, a task that needed to be done. The machine conquers every obstacle in its path except one. No one knows what to call it. A change of that magnitude from luxury to having utility was huge. Its name was the alternative product before it had its marketing name, Land Rover. The combination of land and rover creates one of the greatest icons in British motoring, the Series 1. You get this sort of exploratory, almost this childlike love of the vehicle with the Series Land Rovers. It makes you want to get into it and say, oh, what's this? Oh, let's go and explore that. There's something about the purposeful, functional Land Rover that makes an irresistible appeal to the young and the young in heart. When you're first driving them, they, they have character, they have soul. Inclement weather and a struggling post-war economy create the need. But it's actually Winston Churchill that lays the foundation for the brand's survival. <laughs> 